Welcome to Review Central. This is DCAT reviewer number two, featuring questions for the DCAT mathematics subtest. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the De La Salle College Admission Test or DCAT. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual passages and questions that appeared on previous DCATs. Let's begin. Question number one. Simplify the expression, 3 times the 4th root of 48, minus the 4th root of 243, plus 5 times the 4th root of 3. A. The 4th root of 3. B. Negative the 4th root of 3. C. 8 times the 4th root of 3. D. 2 times the 4th root of 3. E. 5 times the 4th root of 3. The correct answer is C. 8 times the 4th root of 3. Let's show how we arrived at that answer. Step 1. Express 48 and 243 as 16 times 3, and 81 times 3, respectively. Step 2. Factor out 4th root of 3 from the first two expressions. Step 3. Solve. 4th root of 16 is 2. 4th root of 81 is 3. Step 4. Solve. 3 times 2 is 6. Now we have all three expressions with 4th root of 3 as their common factor. 6 minus 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. Therefore, our final answer is 8 times the 4th root of 3. Question number 2. The sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence is given by the formula. S is equal to n over 2 times the quantity a1 plus a n. Write the formula for the first term, a1, of the sequence. a, a1 is equal to the quantity 2s minus n times a n, all over n. b, a1 is equal to s minus n over 2, minus a n. c, a1 is equal to the quantity n times s minus n times a n, all over 2. d, a1 is equal to the quantity s minus n over 2, all over a n. E, a1 is equal to 2s over n squared times a n. The correct answer is C, a1 is equal to the quantity n times s minus n times a n, all over 2. From the given arithmetic sequence formula, let's solve for a1. First, multiply both sides of the equation by 2. We'll get 2s is equal to n times the quantity a1 plus a n. Next, we divide both sides by n. The equation is now, 2s over n is equal to a1 plus a n. Now let's express the equation in terms of a1. a1 equals 2s over n, minus a n. Therefore, our formula for the first term a1 is, a1 equals the quantity 2s minus n times a n, all over n. Question number 3. Determine the equation of the line that crosses the x-axis and y-axis at minus 5 and 0, and 0 and minus 7. A, y equals, 7 over 5 times x, minus 7. B, y equals, negative 7 over 5 times x, minus 7. C, y equals, 5 over 7 times x, minus 7. D, y equals, negative 5 over 7 times x, plus 7. E, y equals 7 over 5 times x, minus 5. The correct answer is B, y equals negative 7 over 5 x minus 7. Whenever you encounter a math problem asking for the equation of a line given two or more points on the line, the first step is always to find the slope of the line. Using the point-slope form of the equation of a line, we can solve for the slope m. We should arrive at m equals minus 7 over 5. The y-intercept is the coordinate 0 and minus 7. Therefore, from the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line, we can determine the value of b to be minus 7. Plugging in the values of the slope m, and the y-intercept b, into the slope-intercept form, we should arrive at the equation y equals minus 7 over 5 x minus 7 question number four 
Suppose that the f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 3, which of the following is the inverse of f of x? a inverse f of x equals 1 over the quantity x plus 3. b inverse f of x equals the quantity x plus 3, all over x. c inverse f of x equals 1 over the quantity x minus 3. d inverse f of x equals x minus 1 third. e inverse f of x equals x over the quantity x minus 3. The correct answer is A, inverse f of x equals 1 over the quantity x plus 3. Step 1, let f of x equals y. Therefore, y equals 1 over x, minus 3. Step 2, get the inverse of the equation. To get the inverse, swap x and y. x equals 1 over y, minus 3. Step 3, solve for y. We should arrive at y equals 1 over the quantity x, plus 3. Step 4, therefore, the inverse f of x equals 1 over the quantity x, plus 3. Question number 5. Which of the following is not true about the function, f of x equals the square root of quantity 2x minus 4, minus 2? A. The graph passes through the point with coordinates x equals 2 and y equals minus 2. B. The domain is the interval from 2 to infinity, excluding infinity. C. The range is the interval from minus to infinity, excluding infinity. D. The x-intercept is 4. E. The y-intercept is minus 2. The correct answer is E. That the y-intercept is minus 2, is not true. Let's examine and evaluate each of the given answer choices. Choice A. The graph passes through the point with coordinates x equals 2 and y equals minus 2. Recall that f of x always equates to the value of y. Therefore, f of x equals minus 2. With the value of x being 2, the square root of the quantity 2x minus 4, minus 2, will also result to minus 2. Therefore, the statement in option A is true. Choice B. The domain is the interval from 2 to infinity, excluding infinity. With 2x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, we determine that x is greater than or equal to 2. That is, the domain of the given function is the interval from 2 to infinity, excluding infinity. Therefore, the statement in choice B is true. Choice C. The range is the interval from minus to infinity, excluding infinity. We can immediately resolve y to be greater than or equal to minus 2. That is, the range of the given function is the interval from minus 2 to infinity, excluding infinity. Therefore, the statement in choice C is also true. Choice D, the x-intercept is 4. To find the x-intercept, we set y, which is f or x, to 0. 0 equals the square root of the quantity 2x minus 4, minus 2. Solving for x, we'll arrive at x equals 4. Therefore, the statement in choice D is likewise true. Choice E, the y-intercept is minus 2. We've already established in choice B that the domain of the function are all the real numbers from 2 to infinity. Therefore, x cannot be 0, which means that there is no y-intercept. Therefore, the statement in choice E is not true. Question number 6. If the function, f of x equals negative quantity negative x, squared, and the function g of x equals 1 minus the absolute value of x, find the value of function f times g of minus 6. a, minus 49. b, minus 35. c, minus 25. d, 25. e, 49. The correct answer is C, negative 25. The function f times g of minus 6 can be expressed as function f of function g of minus 6. First, let's solve for the function g of minus 6. This will be 1 minus the absolute value of minus 6. We'll arrive at minus 5. The function f of the function g of minus 6 is, therefore, equal to the function f of minus 5. Now let's solve for the function f of minus 5. This will be equal to the negative of the square of the quantity minus minus 5. The result should be minus 25. 
Therefore, the function of times g of minus 6 is equal to minus 25. Question number 7. Solve for x in the equation, 9 raised to x, minus 28 times 3 raised to x, plus 27, equals 0. A, 3. B, 1 and 3. C, 0 and 3. D, minus 1 and 0. E, minus 1 and minus 3. The correct answer is C, 0 and 3. In the equation, 9 raised to x, minus 28 times 3 raised to x, plus 27, equals 0, we can express 9 as 3 squared. Let's label this as equation 1. Now let's introduce a variable a and equate it to 3 raised to x. Let's label this as equation 2. Next, we substitute the variable a into equation 1. The resulting equation should now read as, a squared minus 28a, plus 27, is equal to 0. Let's label this as equation 3. Equation 3 is a quadratic equation. Let's attempt to factor it. The factors of the quadratic equation are, a minus 27 and a minus 1. Equating each factor to 0, we should get two values for a, which are 1 and 27. Going back to equation 2. When a equals 1, 1 equals 3 raised to x. Recall from your basic algebra, that 1 can be expressed as any integer raised to 0. Hence, we can express 1 as 3 raised to 0. Therefore, x equals 0. When a equals 27, 27 equals 3 raised to x. 27 can be expressed as 3 raised to 3. Hence, 3 raised to 3 equals 3 raised to x. Therefore, x equals 3. The values of x are therefore, 0 and 3. Question number 8. Which of the following is equal to, logarithm base 6 of the quantity 1 over 216? A. Logarithm base 4 of 64. B. Logarithm base 1 5th of 125. C. Logarithm base 1 half of 1 over 8. D. Negative logarithm of 3. E. Logarithm base 3 of 1 third. The first step of the solution is to simplify the given expression. 216 can be expressed as 6 raised to 3. Hence, the given equation should now read as logarithm base 6 of the quantity 1 over 6 raised to 3. Recall from your logarithmic identities in algebra that log based x of 1 over x raised to y is equal to negative y. Therefore, our given expression is actually equal to simply negative 3. Now let's proceed to examine and evaluate each of the given answer choices. Choice A. 64 can be expressed as 4 raised to 3. Logarithm base 4 of 4 raised to 3 is equal to 3, not minus 3. So no, the expression in option A is not equal to our given expression. Choice B. First, logarithm base 1 fifth can be expressed as logarithm base 5 raised to negative 1. And then, 125 can be expressed as 5 raised to 3. Logarithm base 5 raised to negative 1 of 5 raised to 3 is negative 3. So yes, the expression in option B is equal to our given expression, logarithm base 6 of 1 over 216. Therefore, the correct answer is B. In your DCAT you may already choose B as the correct answer, and move on the next question to conserve precious time. But for now, let's proceed to examine and evaluate the rest of the remaining choices to see how they compare to our given expression, as well as to further review more of our logarithmic identities. Option C. Logarithm base 1 half can be expressed as logarithm base 2 raised to negative 1, and 1 over 8 can be expressed as 1 over 2 raised to 3. Therefore the expression will end up as equal to 3. This is not equal to our given expression, so C is not the correct answer. Option D. Negative logarithm of 3 can be expressed as logarithm 3 raised to negative 1. This can neither be simplified further nor expressed differently, so no, this is not equal to our given expression. Option E. 
Logarithm base 3 of 1 third can be expressed as logarithm base 3 of 3 raised to negative 1, which is further equal to minus 1. This is also not equal to our give expression. In the end, we have established that only the expression in option B is equal to our given expression. Question number 9. When he invested 6,000 pesos in an account that earns 8% per year, simple interest. How much should she invest in another account that earns 12% per year, simple interest, so that her yearly income in the two accounts are the same? A. 3,600 pesos. B. 4,000 pesos. C. 4,800 pesos. D. 5,000 pesos. E. 5,200 pesos. The correct answer is B. 4,000 pesos. Recall your formula for simple interest. I is equal to P times R times T, where I denotes the simple interest earned. P denotes the principal or amount invested. R denotes the interest rate, and T denotes the time, in years, for the investment to earn interest. For this problem we are only calculating the interest earned for one year, so T equals 1. When the interest rate is 12%, the simple interest earned is equal to 0.12p. Let's label this as A. When the interest rate is 8%, the simple interest earned is equal to 480. Let's label this as B. As stated in the problem, the yearly income from the two investments are the same. Therefore, A equals B. From the resulting equation, we should be able to quickly compute for P to be 4,000 pesos. This is how much Winnie should invest, in the account that earns 12% per year. Question number 10. Using Banker's Rule, find the ordinary time, in years, of a loan made on June 10, 2022 and due on September 23, 2022. A. 104 over 360. B. 105 over 360. C. 105 over 365 D 106 over 360 E 106 over 365 The correct answer is B 105 over 360 The banker's rule is another type of simple interest that is similar to ordinary simple interest It is based on a 360 day year but you use the actual number of days in the term when calculating interest. In the given problem we are looking for the actual time, t, in years. We calculate t as the actual number of days over 360. To find the actual number of days, let's count and tabulate the number of days from June 10th to September 23rd. From the table we establish the actual number of days to be 105. Therefore, the actual time is 105 over 360. You have just completed DCAT Reviewer number 2, which featured questions for the DCAT Mathematics subtest. If you wish to watch more DCAT Reviewers for the DCAT Mathematics subtest, check out our DCAT Mathematics Reviewers playlist. Check out also our other DCAT playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, Please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central, and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified, whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming DCAT, and we look forward to your exciting days as a la Salian. Animo LaSalle.